Good morning. Good morning. Um, the announcements for today. We have music at Mohawk on August 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's the, I know it is, yeah, the Occasional Blues Band Plus. So bring your lawn chair and enjoy some refreshments. It says, come jam with the lamb with the flock that rocks. Okay, we have Strike Out Hunger. Please help Strike Out Hunger. There will be a bowling fundraiser on August 25th to raise money for the Kenneth Butler Soup Kitchen. This is the major fundraiser for the year to help cover operating expenses. Mohawk UMC will have a team bowling. If you'd like to bowl or donate, please see Leslie Dalton or Burl Bearhope. And if you haven't done it in the past, it's a lot of fun. Mohawk UMC cookbook reminder, August 18th is the final day to turn in recipes for this amazing cookbook. All pre-orders for cookbooks are due by September 22nd. Cookbooks should be available by November 1st. If you have questions, contact Laura Ferris or Myra Williams. And Laura, yes. So for those online, we need recipes or we're not going to be able to do the cookbook. Um, currently, we have like 70 recipes, and we're wanting at least 100, if not 120. So, College students, classes will soon begin for the college students. College box time will soon be here as well. Please give the names and addresses at school, if you have it, of your college student to Rhonda Beaker. Are there any other announcements? <clears throat> okay. Is anyone celebrating a birthday this week? Oops, I just got this. Is anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? Okay. Um, my daughter actually celebrated her I know she her did. Her so birthday. she's doing acolytes too. Does she don't want to come up? We now light our altar candles to remind us that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is with us. the Lord. It is a beautiful day to lift our hearts in worship, and we're so glad to have all of those who are joining us online again. We're back to live streaming at our regular time, and we do let you know that last week's outdoor service, we are going to get that uploaded, so you'll have a chance to see that. But thank you for joining us again. We give a shout out and a praise to God for your presence as well. I have a few things located in your pews for all of you, if you haven't noticed yet. We've got a flyer here for our music for Mohawk. The best way to invite people is for you to invite them. So this is an opportunity. Take the flyers with you 
Take a couple flyers. If you need more, let me know and we can print more. Hand them out to your neighbors. Share them with a coworker. Slip them in somebody's mailbox and let them know, hey, we have got a great opportunity for some wonderful fellowship. We're gonna be providing some refreshments. Invite them to say, come on out, enjoy some wonderful time and wonderful music at the end of the month. You'll also notice two types of cards, postcards, one green and one not so green. The green card you can take with you and you can take an extra one and share with others. This lets you know we are now up and running on social media. So we are uh, engaging on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and our church website. So the information on how to connect and follow us is on that green postcard. We've already had a number of people following our posts and liking and really getting encouraged by the word of God that is being shared. Now the not so green postcard, this is a resource for prayer. If you would like to take this with you, take it, put it in your car, put it in your Bible, tape it to your mirror in your bathroom as a reminder. These are seven areas of prayer that we encourage you on a daily and weekly basis to lift up to the Lord. We want to be a praying people as we worship Jesus Christ. Now, I want to ask you guys this morning, are you ready to see the unthinkable? Are you ready for a miracle? Well, then we invite you to lift your hearts in worship, to bring a song of praise to the Lord, and to pray for a fresh encounter. Pray, Holy Spirit, come. Like a flood, like a fire, fill this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come. We invite you to stand for our call to worship as we lift our hearts to the Lord. All of heaven and earth proclaim the majesty of God's creative power. Praise the Lord for God's amazing and awesome beauty. Through the prophets, God told us how to live together in harmony and peace. Through Jesus, God showed us how to love and respect one another. Praise the Lord for the unfailing goodness of God. Rejoice in God's steadfast love for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, I need you to reach back in your memory banks. Uh, when Pastor Kerry was here, we did Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. So once it starts playing, I think you'll remember. Please sing. <coughs> sing it twice. Halle, Halle,
Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 7. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. And they did not do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. So we urged Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. We are at the beginning of a new school year. So we want to take a special moment in our time of prayer to lift up our teachers. So if you are a teacher, we invite you to come down to the center here. And then if you don't mind, we're going to lay hands on you. Now, if you don't want to have hands laid on you, just kind of maybe stand where you are in your pews, and we will extend our prayers to you as we want to anoint you with the Spirit of the Lord for this coming school year. So we invite our teachers to come at this moment. We're going to have a special prayer. And we invite anybody who would like to come and just kind of lay your hand and anoint them to come and surround them in support and in prayer. I was going to say, Betsy, you can come on in. <laughs> Join us as well. We're going to, we're going to pray for all of you. <laughs> Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, teaching can be such a long and exhausting journey. We lift up to you, our teachers, and pray that as their energy dips, that they will be replenished with your Holy Spirit throughout this year. Help them to remember the path that they have chosen and reignite their passion. We pray that they will always be learning, that you will give them the patience they need not to be discouraged and bless them to grow gracefully. Some days the material may be tough and the path seems unclear, so we pray grant them clarity Help them to find the best way to communicate with their students. Guide their words, guide their lessons, guide their activities so that this year may be a rewarding journey for them. Heavenly Father, as they face many decisions that affect both their students and our communities, we pray, Lord, help them to make the choices that reflect your glory Guide them in your wisdom and let love be above all in their commitment to the well-being of their students. We pray for your anointing and blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
We continue in our time of sharing. And I invite you to lift up joys that the Lord has given to you this week. I've enjoyed getting out and visiting with <laughs> some of our families. I've had wonderful visits with Millie and with Elaine this week and a number of others. And yesterday, I am so thankful for Tim. Tim was brave enough to join me in engaging with 16 of our women out at Tuttle's. And we had a beautiful gathering, great connections, excellent conversations, and the food was like a taste of heaven. We had a wonderful time, so I am so thankful. What are you thankful for here today? Go ahead, Sarai. You're thankful for our cat, Pumpkin. My daughter, Sarai, is thankful for her cat, Pumpkin. Taryn? I think for the first time in my life, I got an actual good school lunch. Hey. <laughs> my son, Taryn, is thankful for New Pal's school lunch. He enjoyed it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Marsha. I found out that my son-in-law witnessed to a friend of his that has been a, a neighborhood friend he grew up with. So, yeah, and they're both in their, you know, past mid-30s, their late 30s now. And this guy just lost his mother recently. Wow. And he said, you know, I just have this feeling that my mom didn't make it to heaven. I just have this sadness in me. And he's really been searching. So for several hours, my son-in-law spoke to him on the phone. He said, I think I really want to go to your church. He said, I, I've been thinking about going. And he said, I'll come get you. So this morning, he picked up his friend and he's taking him to church. So I Lord. would just like to pray that that the service will minister to his friend, but I'm just, my son-in-law grew up without a dad. He didn't grow up in a Christian home. He became a Christian after, you know, as a young adult. And some of you read about it in my book. <laughs> so I'm just, I just know that uh, it's just so much growth for him and to see that he's witnessing to his friends. And God, people have prophesied over him that he was gonna reach people that others could not reach. And I Amen. think that is true in this case. And I'm, I'm just, uh, so I'm, I'm, it's a blessing, but I'm also, uh, it's a prayer request as well that we pray for his friend that is seeking God. Amen, amen. So Marsha's son has been witnessing and seeing the fruit of God's spirit moving in one of his friends who's joining him for church today. So we're gonna be praying for his friend as well. Go ahead, uh, Bob. <laughs> so Bob is so thankful that Helen's eye surgery went well so she can just see the, the beautiful glory rating off of, of Bob's face. So, <laughs> Sarai? I'm, you're going to have to speak up a little bit. My daughter Sarai did celebrate her 12th birthday, so she thinks she's going on 17, but we had a wonderful birthday celebration this past week. All right. Are there any other prayer requests to lift up to the Lord? We want to continue to keep Wyatt in our prayers as he continues to meet with various doctors and they're trying to get him an appointment with Riley Burn Center to help uh, bring about facilitating uh, the healing of the, the burn in his face uh, from the uh, botched tonsillitis surgery. So keep Wyatt in your prayers as well this week. Any others? And I invite you also to keep the families in Florida in your prayers as Tropical Storm, possibly Hurricane Category 1, Debbie is moving to landfall this afternoon. All right, Sarai, another? Yes, my daughter Sarai is asking for prayers for Grandma and Grandpa. They live in Tallahassee, Florida, so... We're keeping them in prayers as they prepare for that landfall later this afternoon. 
Let us go to the Lord in prayer. I'll start us off with our pastoral prayer, and then we'll join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, we are so grateful for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our lives, for the energy that you give us day in and day out, and that even when we are weak, even when we hurt, Lord, you can take that weakness and that hurt. You can and you will use it. We thank you, dear Jesus, for your ever-present help. We continue to lift little Wyatt to you, and we pray, Lord, for the healing of his face. We pray as he and his uh, siblings begin school that you will let your angels watch over him. We pray for Marcia's son, and we pray for his friend. Almighty God, move in a mighty way. We claim that miracle. We pray for the salvation. Let it blossom, Lord, as your word is placed in their hearts. We pray for the families in Florida. We ask for your protection upon them. We pray for the southern states that are going to be hit with a lot of flooding. Lord, even as we can be of help up here in Indiana, show us, Lord, how we can be your body, your hands, your feet. We continue to honor you and glorify your holy name as we now join together in saying the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite our ushers to come forth at this time to collect our morning offering.
Almighty, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. For all belong to you. And we rejoice, Lord, to be able to give back to you. Lord, help us to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To know the depth, the width, the height of his love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to invite our children to come forward at this time. Hi, Abel. And here comes Nora and Franklin. Ah, yeah. You know what's in here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have been looking forward to little Franklin coming back up here. We have so much fun. I know. Exactly. <laughs> well, how are you guys today? I know Franklin's good. <laughs> Nora's giving me a thumbs up. Abel, you okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I want to share with you a passage of scripture. And I want to share with you a dear story of mine. <clears throat> the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound in us so that in all things, at all times, we're going to have everything we need so that we can do some good works. Now, I've got something special here that I wanted to share with you. It's Barbies. That's right. I wanted to share with you some of my favorites here. It's a wedding Barbie. Yes. There was once a young person loved Barbies. She had such a special Barbie. She enjoyed day in and day out getting her Barbie dressed, making sure the shoes matched, making sure the hair was all nice. And then one day, She got a second Barbie. A candy princess Barbie. Well, now she had two Barbies. This was even better, because now Barbie number one had a friend, Barbie number two. And so she could dress Barbie number two and dress Barbie number one, and everything was good. Well, it wasn't too much longer when everybody figured out she liked playing with Barbies. And you know what happened? Everybody started buying her Barbies. Suddenly, what was one Barbie and then two Barbies quickly became 25 Barbies. And she had so many Barbies, she couldn't dress them all anymore. Possibly. She didn't know what to do with them. They were lying around the house. The clothing and the shoes were all over the place. And you know what mom said? Clean up this Barbie mess. Well, this was a smart girl. She realized that sometimes two can be more than 25. She only have a couple. So you know what she did? Kind of what you said, Nora. She took her other Barbies that people had gave her 
and she gave them to her friends so that they would have some Barbies too. <laughs> ah, that's right, they were so happy! Oh my God, they have a Barbie too! Oh my goodness! So all of her friends had Barbies too, and guess what, then they all wanted to play with her and her two Barbies. And she realized she was more happy with just two Barbies than she was with 25. See, sometimes God gives us special gifts, not so that we can have them, but God gives us these special gifts so that we can share them with other people. And when we do, we realize just how much Two can be greater than 25. Shall we pray? Okay. Well, dear Father, thank you for the wonderful gifts that you give to us. Help us to give these gifts to others. And remember that you give us what we need. And remember that you give us what we need. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's see. Do we have children's church this morning? All right. Susan says, yes, we do. So you guys get to go have a great lesson. Hey, our mom's running away from her. Uh-oh. She's got you in her sights. <laughs> we invite you to join with us as we now lift our hearts to the Lord in a song that is a prayer. I surrender all.
please remain standing for the gospel lesson. The gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. As he looked up, Jesus saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. I tell you the truth, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You can be seated. This summer, God revealed to me an upside down kingdom truth. I call it upside down because it makes no sense according to the world. But to Jesus, it makes perfect sense. This is what God revealed to me. The less we have, the more we can give. Now think about that. Wrestle with it. Let it sink into your soul. God revealed this upside down truth while I was reading the story of the widow's offering. I had been struggling with a desire to increase my giving, to sponsor a second child through childfund.org. This is a company that you can sponsor children throughout the world and help provide education, food, medical assistance, not only to them, but to their entire family. My wife and I and our family, we had been sponsoring a young child for a number of years. And God had put it on my heart to add a second child. At the same time, the Dare to Care organization out of Louisville, which helps feed thousands of starving families in the Kentucky and Indiana area of Louisville, was doing their summer campaign. And my favorite Christian radio station, his radio, was doing their summer giving program. I felt a call to give to all three, to give more to support the hungry, to care for children, to advance the gospel, and to aid persecuted Christians throughout the world. And I prayed, Lord, how can I do this? How can I feed your people? How can I tend your sheep and excel in giving when I have less income to work with than I did last year? Be careful what you pray for. The Lord said, let me show you. And I opened my Bible to Luke chapter 21. 
And I read the touching story of a poor but generous widow. Imagine the scene. Jesus is leaning against a wall in the outer court of women outside of the temple in Jerusalem. He's looking across to the treasury. He has just delivered a burning series of woes to a group of hypocritical know-it-alls. And looking up, he watches rich folk drop bags of gold into trumpet-shaped receptacles. You can imagine the noise that these metal coins make, the prolonged loud clatter as they work their way down that trumpet-shaped receptacle. And then he sees an awe-inspiring deed of self-sacrificial love done by a poor, unknown worshiper which captures his favor. At the end of the line, there is a widow who lives in miserable poverty. The word Luke uses to describe her indicates she is starving. She has to beg each day to slate her hunger. And this woman quietly drops in to lepa. These are the smallest copper coins in that day. Coins that would not even be worth two pennies in today's market. These two wisps of metal would have barely made a sound as they fell into the tre treasury chest. But Jesus knows that these two coins are all that she has to live on. And since she had two coins, she could have kept one of them for herself to help stave off starvation for one more day. But her heart is one that cannot hold anything back. In Jesus' eyes, her gift is more precious than all the other bags of gold given in service to the temple because she is offering her very life to God. And here is where God's upside-down kingdom truth comes into play. Jesus says in verse 3, This Poor widow has put in more than all the rest. Stop and listen to that again. This poor widow has put in more than all the rest. How could two lepa be of greater value than bags of gold? It doesn't make sense. And yet to Jesus it makes perfect sense. The woman's gift is a sign of her complete and unreserved sacrifice to God. All the others, they gave something that they could afford to spare. And in this way they gave less than she did. How could this hungry widow give everything away? Well, although Luke does not elaborate, I believe it's because she had faith. She relies upon God to provide her daily bread, the very thing Jesus taught his disciples and we pray for still today. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. She puts into practice Jesus' teaching from Luke chapter 12, where Jesus says, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. And your Father knows that you need these things. Strive 
first for the kingdom of God, and these things will be given to you as well. This woman makes an unusually great effort to trust that God will perfectly and abundantly provide for her according to his will. And God said to me, Are you willing to trust me as this poor widow does? Do you have a heart that cannot hold anything back? Or are you going to wait until you see what is left over after you pay all your bills and then give a little before pocketing the rest for coffee and pizza? Ouch! God then reminded me of another widow who gave more when she had less. In first. Kings chapter 17 from the Old Testament. After the prophet Elijah informs Ahab that it will not rain for three years and a drought settles over the land, God then calls a widow from Zarephath who has only enough food for one last meal for herself and her son to care for his servant Elijah. And when Elijah asks for a piece of bread, she replies, I don't have any bread. I only have a handful of flour and a little oil. And Elijah says to her, don't be afraid. Go home. Make a small cake for me. And make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry. The widow obeys the word of God and there is food every day for Elijah and her family. God provided perfectly and abundantly. God can provide from surprising places and so again he asked me, Are you like the widow Zarephath, willing to obey my word and excel in the grace of giving to aid others when you have just enough to get through one more day, one more month, one more year, when there seems to be nothing between you and death except my promise? You see, God is not indifferent to our suffering. Our poverty is an opportunity for him to display his divine power. We grieve God when we don't trust him. Fear not to give. The Apostle Paul learned this truth when he was awestruck by the generosity of the Macedonian churches and their willingness to help him and the other Christians in Jerusalem who... We're going through a difficult time of starvation as well. The poverty of the Macedonians went to the very bottom of the barrel. They were daily harassed and plundered by their neighbors who imprisoned them and then confiscated their goods and their food because of their faith in Jesus. Consequently, their expenses exceeded their income on a regular basis. And yet, Paul says, they gave more than their wealthy brothers and sisters in Corinth. When we live in prosperity, giving generously is not a problem. But when we live in adversity, under trying pressures and demands... Giving to the relief of others is remarkable. How did the churches in Macedonia give more when they have less? Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and you'll find out. First off, the grace of God was poured out on them, resulting in abundant joy. In other words, God himself got them excited. Not with a natural desire, 
but with an impossible flow of grace. The Macedonian churches then gave themselves completely over to God. And in doing so, they were filled with God's supernatural power in giving to do good. Filled to the brim with grace, they became instruments of grace. And Paul bears witness to their determination. Their hearts were larger than their purses, and God provided for them to fulfill their holy desire. The greater the depth of our poverty, the greater our joy in giving. There's another upside-down kingdom truth. The ability to give is always there. We just have to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. If you give with this Holy Spirit power, will you be one of the few this year whom Jesus admires? Will you say, I'm going to go play in the puddle of God's grace? I'm going to splash around like a little child with joyful glee? As I make that grace puddle spill over, am I going to laugh? Am I going to giggle? Am I going to give myself completely to God? Well, if you choose to do so, your joy will be supernatural. This is a timeless, upside-down kingdom truth. In the book of Revelation, where God describes his plan to the end... Jesus says in chapter 2, verse 9, to the church in Smyrna, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. The closer we get to the end times, the more intense poverty is going to be for Christians. And yet we will be rich, abounding in grace towards God and in good deeds towards others. Those counted among the church of Smyrna will be honored by the one who is the first and the last, who is dead and was or is alive. Will you be among them? Christ notes our poverty, and he blesses us with the promise of the crown of life. Where there is spiritual plenty, outward poverty does not discourage us from giving for the sake of Christ. For he satisfies and he enables us to endure to the end. Can you truly say, I give thanks to the Lord because you, Lord, have brought me to this hour so that I may excel in the grace of giving just as you first gave to me unto the resurrection of eternal life and through the power of your Holy Spirit? Well, Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross, two Christian martyrs, remind us that the true test of oneness with God is the charity that flows from our hearts. In other words, we give as a reflection of our love. Give less, and you will love less. Give more, and you will love more. And so in light of these upside-down kingdom truths, I admit to you here today, I prayed, Lord, I will give, and I won't hold anything back. I will trust in you to perfectly and abundantly provide. I will obey your word. I will overflow with your grace, and I will give myself completely over to you. I will love more. And so I signed up to sponsor a second child through Child Fund. If you'd like, I've got a letter from little Naldo from the Philippines, my second child, as well as a picture from our first child, Rovan, here. So we are the now proud sponsors of two children on top of our own. And I wrote a check to help support the hungry in our community. And I increased my support of his radio, Christian radio station, from $40 a month to $50 a month. I gave to serve the body of Christ. When you live to God in all things, you will find that he 
perfectly and abundantly provides. He gives us what we need so that we can give more to do good works of faith. We're going to look at God's perfect provision and his abundant provision in the next two weeks as we study the stories of the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000 recorded in the Gospels. And we find that those who have nothing to, to give can yet do great things in Jesus. As you leave today, I ask you, what do these stories of appeal and conviction communicate to you? What is Christ's estimate of your giving? What does it mean to give not only out of your abundance, but out of your poverty? Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, our hymn of hope. He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought. this week. May the Spirit lead you to excel in the grace of giving, to glorify God, to advance his gospel, to care for children, to care for the poor, to help the church throughout the world as we honor him with our whole hearts and lives. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>